in session number three of four. Uh, if you missed the previous two sessions, please reach out to us and we'll be able to connect you with those resources. The first session um, and the second session are recorded, so those will be available to you, okay? Um, again, this is about efficiency tools and tips, the software and strategies that'll save you time, give you more results. And I'm Timothy Morgan, your founder, CEO. Uh, Corey Michael couldn't make it today, but uh, if you wanna reach out to him, you're welcome to do that as well. We do have a reward associated with our challenges. So whether you're watching this recording or you're with us live, we wanna encourage you to ask about our, our monthly rewards, those rewards that come up monthly in our challenges. As of right now, at the time of this recording, this is our challenge reward. So you get a $1,500 value for participating at a high level. And not only will that help us know that you're involved, but it'll help build your company and make sure you get more attention. Uh, our mission is to bring positive attention to causes and companies doing good in the world. And we want you to get more eyeballs on what you're doing. <laughs> if you believe in what you're doing, you want to get the word out, right? So 30 minute session from a certified marketing coach, some visibility service, graphic design service. These are some of our most popular services and we're giving them away. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are givers and we want you to participate in a way that would help your business. There, there's something special about putting the, that information into action, right? We don't wanna just have more information. You can go watch some, some spammy webinar or something if you wanna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna dig into the, into the weeds here and, and make sure that you know exactly what tools to use make sure that um, we're not sitting here pitching you the whole time. We want you to have something to take away and apply today to improve your business or uh, organization, okay? So the seven action assignments that you're gonna wanna keep, in tra keep track of so that you can earn that reward are here on the screen. If you wanna know more about that, please reach out to us individually, message us on one of our pages, uh, reach out to us through our website at givermarketing.com, that'll be fine and we'll gladly walk you through how to earn that reward, okay? And the key is to participate and connect with each one of our uh, sessions, our master classes, if you wanna think of them that way. Um, there's uh, the first Tuesday of every month, we cover the Giver Marketing Blueprint. Second Tuesday is LinkedIn Appointments. Third Tuesday, which is the time of this recording, Efficiency Tools and Tips. Uh, fourth Tuesday, which is next session, uh, the fourth session would be social media best practices. Whenever there's a fifth Tuesday, we go into bonus time. We go into mm -hmm. extra innings. We go into overtime, my friends. And so you want to definitely pay attention to that. Last time we went and discussed referral ping pong. That was super fun. That was very fun. <laughs> so do you want to save time while connecting with your audience? Hey, we're big about being efficient around here. And with all the tools and tips available, we thought we'd compile and put them all together and actually show you what we, what we do within our own companies. And I say companies because we're a network of marketing professionals that lead with coaching. And we're proud of our tribe. We have a family of marketing professionals who, who have specialties and they, they know what they're doing. They put their thousands and thousands of hours into specific skill sets around marketing. And we're just super proud to be working together, which is why we're the highest reviewed uh, network or group like, like, like we are on the planet. So we're, we're proud of uh, the reviews and the feedback and the kind words that are coming uh, all over the place online, including what you see on the screen here. And you're welcome to just Google Giver Marketing or one of our team members. And, and these kind words will show up all over the place. Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of five-star reviews uh, combined with all the network members in our cohort, <laughs> in our kind of uh, collaborative network of, of, of pros who are helping you with your marketing, okay? Our core values are here. If you have any questions or if we deviate from any of these at any point in time, please let us know. We're humble enough to say, hey, sorry, we, uh, we need to get back on track. But these are our core values uh, that all of our team members are aware of. And so we want to treat you with deep, deep respect and value your time. So if, if you're hungry, coachable, and passionate, you're in the right place. Uh, if, if you're 
kind of tired of your business and you just don't want to be in that industry anymore, or you don't really care about people, or you're just not passionate about what you're doing, this is probably not a good session or a, a use of time for you. But if you're in growth mode and you want to really rock and roll and accomplish your mission, uh, we recommend starting with the Giver Marketing Blueprint, which is the roadmap we discussed a couple of weeks ago. And it covers branding, visibility, promotion, and nurturing. Uh, we're going to be discussing some other things that are built on top of that today. But you might be asking yourself, hey, why productivity tools? I thought this was a marketing challenge. Like what is this? I mean, we're not talking about operations. We're not talking about HR. We're not talking about anything. We don't, we don't cover those in, in general. But what we will say is this. The tools we're talking about will greatly impact your marketing directly. It's not, uh, it's not even indirectly, it's directly. It will, it will affect your brand. Um, it will help you save, your save time in doing the marketing activities you already should be doing anyway in order to get as many eyeballs on your organization or company as you can. All right, let's jump in because we want to have some time for a discussion and maybe digging into Calendly a little bit later. Hint, hint, hint. Uh, Stacy has brought that up, so we're going to discuss and dive a little deeper into just the details of Calendly and some fun, fun ways to use that tool. Uh, free tool, by the way. A lot of these tools are, most of these tools are free and low cost. So you'll find yourself uh, not breaking the bank, but saving a lot of time and generating a lot of, uh, basically producing revenue generating activity is essentially what we're trying to help you do, okay? All right, let's talk about project management really quickly um, to kind of get us started. And yes, we are getting started. So grab your pen and paper, grab your note-taking device, and let's jump in. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, Trello. All right, so Trello is a project management board. Stacy, you and I use Trello um, within our respective companies, within Giver Marketing, the network, Kurt and I have a Trello board we work on together and uh, help each other on different things. We love tr Trello is one of the best free tools for keeping your thoughts, your action items, your, your collaboration efforts all in one place. So you're not going back and forth on emails, trying to coordinate projects. And um, honestly, with how much uh, busyness there is in our inbox on our emails, uh, we have to have segmented or dedicated spaces for project management communication. And shoot, I'll be up, uh, you know, late at night kind of thinking about something around, around the business and I'll just put it on my own Trello board. I just created a personal Trello board recently. Like, hey, don't forget to think about this or, hey, what about this book idea or, you know, whatever it is, put it on your Trello board. We have one for our home, just our, you know, projects around the house. Like we, we keep a lot of boards for different things. So super fun, um, super easy to use. There's a, a few different views on Trello. Um, if you don't use Trello, I would, I would just start with that. I think that's a really good and fun, fun way to start. All right. HubSpot is a, a client re retention or relationship manager, depending on how you want to view it or say it. But CRM, if you ever heard the acronym CRM or, or the acrostic CRM, then you definitely want to check out HubSpot. It's a great place to start if you want to keep track of all your clients and prospects and tag them with different notes and make sure and segment them and get them ready for emails. And it integrates into so many different other tools as well, like G Gmail and and it'll make sure and keep track of your sales and marketing cycle, okay? That client journey, that prospect's journey needs to be tracked somewhere, and HubSpot is a great one to start with. If you want to put your big boy and big girl britches on and really dive into a robust, all-inclusive, lots of bells and whistles kind of a platform, Zoho is a great platform to expand your horizon. So, if you've kind of graduated from the free services and you want to get deeper into uh, multi-dimensional CRMs that have bells and whistles that you can integrate into so many different pieces, to some degree, it almost replaces 
uh, it replaces about two or three dozen other um, tools that potentially within Zoho. So look at Zoho and, and look at Zoho One. For as little as $30 a month, you can have so many spreadsheets. It, it replaces Google uh, Drive. It, it replaces, you can do signatures. You can do uh, help desks. You can do, uh, you know, like Zendesk, like people uh, sending in tickets. Uh, you can, do, there's so many different applications. We don't have time to go into it today, but it's much more than just a CRM. It has all these other tools built around it. It's probably, in my estimation, if you were to buy some of these tools separately uh, outside of Zoho One, right, which is the $30 a month version, um, it probably costs somewhere in the neighborhood of $500 to $1,000 a month. Um, but it's, it's only 30 bucks a month. So it's a very good tool. Todoist, Stacy, have you experimented with this recently or seen some clients or prospects using this tool at all? Uh, can you speak yeah, to Yeah, I use it. I use it myself to keep myself on track and give myself lists. And it's a great way, like you can use for, like it says, your grocery list, your task management list, stuff that needs to happen right away. You can download a click on your phone and it's easy to just type something in if you're on the go. So that's what I like about it. And um, it's more for yourself. If you can't really tag other people in it, but it's it's a good one to keep on your on your tasks. All right. So if it's a small task that doesn't, doesn't require a full card and collaboration and its own Trello board and all this other stuff. It's just a, just a little note for yourself. Like, Hey, don't forget to do this. Or here's a priority list of five things that I need to do today. Or, you know, those can just to do lists that are super simple, right. And make sure that they're put somewhere. We're, we're trying to help you go paperless ladies and gentlemen, that's basically what's going on here. If you haven't figured it out yet, we're a paperless company. We have no contracts. We, we, we love, love keeping things simple, sweet, efficient, and digital. And that's ultimately what this is about. Um, we have a visibility tool. This is by far our most popular tool and that we've had in all the years that we've been in business. And it's because it helps you do something that most companies have difficulty doing on their own, okay? Uh, a visibility tool that that you see on the screen, givermarketing.com slash visibility is where you want to go. And it'll show you where you're listed in relation to Google searches. Uh, at the time of this recording, Google is the king of search. And we want to encourage you that almost nine out of 10 people will go online before making a buying decision. So you want to be consistent. You want to be accurate. You want to be very, very findable. <laughs> is that a word? Findable online very quickly. And this is the way to do it. Uh, if, if you're the best kept secret in your industry or in the nation or in your region, this is the tool for you. You want to get found quickly. All right. Some companies will charge hundreds of dollars for this kind of thing. And we just want to let you have access to that. And if you need some help with it, then we'll, we'll check, you know, there's a small fee to be able to help you set everything up, but Ultimately, you can do it yourself. You just use the tool and go in manually and kind of update everything, make sure it's all consistent and should be good. All right, so there's dozens of directories that you want to be listed on accurately. That's what that tool does. And then, and it looks a lot like this. Uh, you'll see that you'll begin being listed. This is an actual client that we uh, wor have worked with for years. And you'll, you'll, you'll start dominating the Google pages more effectively as you become listed properly on what they call uh, directories and listings. Some people call them citations. There's different language, but ultimately you're gonna wanna be listed on Google properly. That, that's the, at the end of the day, that's what we want for that's you. That's funny that you'd say that. I've gone through the visibility scan and I had a random phone call last week because I was listed. Hey, I love that. I love it. It's always nice when you're listed on these platforms and you start getting people uh, you know, inbound kind of uh, activity happening where they're just finding you because you're listed. Wow, mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you, Stacy. Good. And, you know, ultimately that's where companies generally go is they push a lot of outbound marketing and then they become known in the industry. They become an authority. They become listed properly in all these places. And before you know it, you, 
people start talking about you in, in third third spaces. I know, Kurt, you have some examples of that happening here recently as well. And so to be able to have people just kind of recognize or find you and then just kind of reach out to you. And uh, there's nothing more frustrating than reaching out, you know, wanting to reach out to somebody and they're not listed anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, it's almost, you almost have this instinct that says, are they in a legit business? Like, do they really know what they're doing? Have they been around for a while? Like, are they in the modern era? Is it going to be this hard to have conversations with them if I can't even find them online? All these subconscious kind of, or conscious for that matter, kind of thoughts come through if you're not listed well. All right. So you can see why that's one of the more popular tools. Now, this one here, Stacy, you and I have been talking quite a bit about this. Kurt, you and I, I mean, we've been discussing the power of Calendly for years now. I mean, just trying to figure out how to set up and schedule appointments. Stacy, you and I, when we were first working together, you you really came in as a uh, a lady in shining armor, trying to help set up appointments and do some different things. And uh, ultimately, Calendly has really been able to help us. Can you explain a little bit more how you use Calendly and what, what, how that can help clients and, and, and what they're doing with their business? Calendly keeps your, um, keeps you organized really, because when you're trying to reach out to people and you're going back and forth about booking times, people aren't always answering you right away. You could book another time over top, but if you have a Calendly, then you send them a link, they book what's available on your schedule. So the very important piece of this, this is a free tool. You get one calendar calendar link. You get one link to use for free. Um, and it gives you approximately 35 minutes of a meeting time. You can pay and upgrade and get a little bit more, but to keep it free and keep things simple, that's what we're pushing um, on this recording today. You can definitely set up very easily and it allows you to be able to, to set that appointment up without the hassle of going back and forth so you can set it up so that you can call the person or you can have a zoom meeting um on with the calendar as well so it's very good to keep track you can also look back and see who you how many appointments you've had it keeps a record of how many appointments you've had so you can go back and maybe you're Maybe one day you're thinking of someone, you can't remember their name or something like that. You can go back in there and go, oh yeah, that was that person. You know, you can pick it out if it's some if it's in your Calendly. Um, I love that you mentioned how it syncs up with, you know, Zoom and uh, depending on what, uh, you know, what what uh, Zoom product you, you've purchased, you have a certain amount of, you know, Zoom time that you can spend on on that chat uh, on that conversation but calendly is free for one event like stacy was saying and it integrates with zoom and your google calendar or outlook it makes sure that you're not double booking that's the that's the big thing is and also i'll add to what you were saying stacy um you can uh, turn those appointments into a c csv file and so you can have a spreadsheet of all the appointments you had, let's say from last year, just sitting all in, all in one place and you can just upload them to your CRM or do whatever you want to do with them. But the point is, is there's a good organization to the appointments that are being booked and you avoid double booking. I don't know about you, but chasing people back and forth, trying to schedule an appointment and then ultimately they book at the same time somebody else does that's like triple annoying. So that that's what problem that solves. And that's why there's so many people using that. Kurt, how are, how, how have you experienced I, Calendly? I, I got so much to say about Calendly and I don't want to dominate or go too long on the call, but you know, I'm a guy that likes custom tools and I like things that are attached to my own web property, right? Like, so I like things to be consolidated in my stuff, but Calendly is the exception. I actually discontinued my own calendar tool and went exclusively to Calendly after you counseled me to do so. Um, And that's because when I go to book with somebody, if they're a Calendly user as well, I see their available times, my available times, it syncs to my Outlook, it pings my phone, it sets up the Zoom meeting, like you said. Um, And to Stacy's point, 
all of the previous meetings are there, right? And so like, I just went through an episode having to buy new laptops, right? And so my Outlook didn't have all my contacts in it. Export, import, got all my people, add them to my mail lists, good to go, right? And it's, and it's just one of those things where Calendly, um, and, and for 10 bucks a month, right? Because I know you guys are pushing the free thing, but it's only 10 bucks a month. And then you can have, you can set up the menu. So if I'm talking to someone that wants to do a 15 minute introductory call, I got a link for that. If it's a 30 minute Zoom call, I got a link for that. If it's a 60 minute Zoom call to record a podcast, I got a link for that. And because I took the time to set it up in advance, it's as simple as sending the link. They book their time. It aligns with the calendar for me and them. And boom, the other tools didn't show me their availability in the Calendly link, right? So if they didn't, because it's such a dominant thing, right? So mm -hmm. it's Calendly is so dominant in the marketplace that it is the tool to connect with people. It's not a tool. A couple of little features on Calendly we can talk about a little later too, if we have time is you can add a guest to your mm -hmm. appointment with Calendly and it automatically books on most calendars. So I won't say all, but most calendars, it will automatically populate their calendar when they open. In other words, they don't have to click around and try to figure out, you know, figure out where the add to calendar link is and some of those kind of things. Uh, honorable mention, Book Like a Boss has some of the same features with the exception of the, the two I just mentioned. <laughs> but they have many of the same features uh, that we're discussing. So there's some some free and paid versions of these tools. And we just want to encourage you to get a scheduler, make it happen. <laughs> yes, yes. It All will right. make your life easier. LastPass is no longer an option or, or uh, uh, a password manager is no longer an option. It's probably a better way to say it. LastPass is a good one, Dashlane. I think there's one called OnePass and there, there's a, a few different ones. Um, and Kurt, if you have a, you know, an idea on this uh, as far as password managers we'd be open to maybe some other options too but get a password manager ladies and gentlemen you have to remember one password and then it'll give you access to the rest of them it has two-factor authentication built into all these so that it's very safe it's actually safer to do this than to write it on a piece of paper and put it in your drawer it's really really safe to do it more digitally in the cloud now as opposed to having some random piece of paper somewhere that Honestly, a lot of people can get a hold of that. Take a screen, you know, take a screenshot of, you know, a screenshot of it or a quick picture of it, and then they got your stuff. So we don't want them to have that kind of access. We want to have some digital firewalls that are or digital protection against your passwords. Anybody else have any thoughts around the password managers? I just recommend as well that it's that that it's there that you have it, you have one going. Go ahead, Kirk. I was just typing the comment and that's the funny part. Um, the honorable mention, the last pass is to double check whatever your uh, antivirus software is. Cause a lot of those software mm -hmm. packages have a last pass type functionality. Mm -hmm. And then it's something that's already in your computer rather than something else that you're adding. Yeah, that's an option. Uh, one of the things that I've found helpful personally, Kurt, on that note is uh, like Google will have a, like a, a password manager built into it. But it doesn't always, I, I don't know, there's some functionality to LastPass that's a little bit more robust. So I, I like actually having both, where you have kind of almost like a backup to a backup <laughs> to a backup. I don't know. These passwords are important, man. I mean, we're all the uh, banking institutions and software we're using for our companies and financial platforms like Wave, like uh, all these different, to, you know, uh, tools that we need yeah. username and passwords and credentials for so well and if you started getting the notifications last month you know google got hacked on the password saver right and so in in sadly in my instance i had over 200 saved passwords in google mm -hmm. and i had a lot of work to do to go in and fix that stuff yep yep you got to be got to protect yourself and it looks seems like every 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 legitimate uh, platform is starting to lean toward two-factor authentication and some of these other things. And at the time of this recording, there's a, a real uh, security issue that is being addressed right now. So, hey, uh, let's talk about Wave, Stacy. I mean, when we're sending out uh, invoices uh, for smaller projects or for reoccurring 
um, projects where we want to make sure that it's easy for someone to pay us. Let's not make it difficult, ladies and gentlemen. We need to make it easy for people to pay us for our work, our efforts, our genius. Um, Stacy, do you have any thoughts on just kind of sending invoices, those kind of things? This is a straightforward, easy, it's good for startup. So that's one thing I want to really mention here is a lot of these tools that we're talking about are good for startup businesses, because we know as a startup, you have to learn how to do these things lots of times. You're, you're not, exper not necessarily experienced in all these things. So these, this is an easy to use, user friendly. You can set up the um, credit card system very easily. I, I use it once in a while and it's great. It's great for, for watching what's going on in your business for sure. Cool. Yeah, it seems like uh, many of these tools that we're mentioning, uh, you can use as a startup and then grow to your like first million or two and then start basically adding paid features to each one of these tools. And you're not going to really outgrow them per se. They're just really easy to use in the beginning. So you're not sitting there frozen trying to figure out what tools to use. And that's part of our time today, right? Evernote is fun for note taking. Again, we're trying to help you go paperless. So if you want to scan something or write something down with your digital pen, you know, it, what it, however you take notes, consider using your device and app called Evernote to be able to integrate and sync into other platforms. There's so many different uh, bells and whistles to Evernote. I, I, we can't even go in, you can scan receipts, you can have them in a, a folder, like there, anything that you would have paper that doesn't go into one of these other platforms, this could be like a catch-all for you, basically writing down thoughts. Uh, there's, I believe, a voice to text uh, feature as well. So you can just write yourself some thoughts on that and use that tool with your mobile device or whatever device you're, you're used to. Fireflies is interesting. Um, and Stacy, if there's any uh, you know comments that Kurt's blowing up the chat box or others are doing, hey, let, let's bring them in. Let's bring those comments in, okay? Uh, fireflies.ai. I can't tell you how many times I wish I had a transcription of a conversation I had with somebody on Zoom. Word for word, it would have been nice to know what they said, how they said it, what context it was in, and Fireflies does all that work for you at a, well, it's free, it's a free tool, but if you wanna customize it, here's a hint that not many people know about. One of our team members showed me this. If you wanna customize this, it's like five bucks a month. You could call it like Kurt's note taker or, you know, Stacy's scribble, or, you know, or we, we call it giver notes whenever it comes up on, on Zoom uh, meetings that we want to record. It transcribes it very well. It breaks it down to who's saying what. It gives you an audio file, so you can go back and listen to it if you're driving and you want to just listen to it, aud the audio uh, conversation. It does basically everything but video. Honorable mention is Otter. It's another free tool up to 600 minutes a month, if I remember right. Yeah, 600 minutes a month for free. And that does- uh, No, I think it's 600 minutes in general, not a oh, month. Oh, that's right. That's right. 600 minutes. And I believe it, I believe it might start over every month for that 600 minutes, but you get at least 600 minutes for free to be able to transcribe. And so it's really cool. Those are both tools we use. I like to have backups. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I like to have backups. Like if Fireflies isn't working perfectly, I'll just bring in Otter and we're good to go. Plus Otter uh, works with Zoom and you can automatically set up Otter to where it syncs up with Zoom and it will record in the cloud everything at the same time you're recording the the video in the cloud to Zoom. So a lot of these tools are very, very much designed to work with Zoom, okay? Facebook Messenger, hey, uh, for business, there's so many ways to be able to start playing with the, the concept of having automated responses, questions that you can answer in, on your business page. And I say business page, on purpose because we're not just talking about your regular messenger that you have on your personal profile on 
on on Facebook, but the business page itself has some fun bells and whistles to it that are free. They're built in. They're basically like the beginning stages of, of artificial intelligence and automation um, through chat. And so you want to be able, we even plug this into our website. Like if somebody wants to ask a quick question, they go to our website and it's just sitting there like, hey, just ask a question and it'll ping us uh, right through our business uh, Facebook page. So it's a, it's a good tool for multiple reasons. Kirk's saying, it's, Kirk's saying it's easy to integrate with um, WordPress. Oh, good point. Good point. Great Thanks for clients. Thanks for mentioning WordPress, Kurt, because uh, something well, I've noticed, it integrate it integrates with TikTok. So if you're using TikTok for your business, I've noticed Facebook Messenger on there as well. Very interesting. Yeah. And I know Instagram and Facebook are starting to play nice together because they're brother and sister companies. Mm -hmm. um, they were bought out by Facebook. So there's these different uh, platforms that are starting to you know, really play nice together. Uh, so that the whole ecosystem can can work well. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts around mess, uh, Facebook Messenger for business specifically? You can post your hour, commonly asked questions, hours. Uh, here's a link to schedule an appointment. That's what we do. Uh, if somebody goes to our business page and they start ch typing something, it'll automatically say, hey, for to, to talk more, you know, uh, specifically about this, why don't we just set up a 10 minute call and it, it automatically starts giving access to calendars and things like that. So that's a, that's a really practical way to tie a Calendly link right into your Facebook messenger automation messages or your artificial intelligence features. All right, Bonjoro. And actually there's some other ones too, similar to Bonjoro, but Bonjoro we recommend trying because you can use this to send personalized video messages in a, in a very uh, quick manner. So it allows you to interact through email uh, through, or through other messaging uh, platforms to be able to send a video very easily. And it's, just, it's a great app that just lets you do it very, 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 very quickly. It cuts, it cuts out a couple of steps that if you were gonna do it yourself, with some of the um, native uh, software features on your phone uh, or your device, Bonjour cuts out a couple steps. So it just saves you a little bit of time there, okay? Super um, easy to use too. Yeah, there's another, there's another tool called Loom as well that uh, it'll capture your screen and your face, but that's more for like telling people about, uh, you know, features of a website or recording something from a, you know, a problem area for one of, you know, one of the um, platforms that you're using or something like that. That's a very, it's a different use case, but we're still, we're starting to utilize more video uh, to communicate as opposed to just a text or a quick, you know, a screenshot. Those are fine for some cases, but sometimes you just need a video to just tell somebody, hey, welcome to the group or, hey, welcome to the team or, hey, uh, did you have any questions about our last conversation? And have it personalized. Stacy, you and I have a friend named Josh, who he's mm -hmm. a master of sending a video follow-up. Almost every time you have a conversation with him, he's sending a video follow-up, writing your name on a little whiteboard, and he's yeah. like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" And it's like you feel like you you feel like you've talked to him like fifteen times before you even get on the call with him. Like it's it it, it feels very connected, and that's the power of video. So yes, uh, we could talk about that for hours because video is the thing right now like you got to get into video ladies and gentlemen bonjuro is a fun way to kind of experiment with that make sure your lighting is good hey what's going on so super fun all right mailchimp um there's mailer light there's mailchimp there's there's so many email uh you know active campaign there, there's constant contact i mean I, we can go on and on and on about different May, uh, we've, we've tried them all, you know, we tried a lot of them, but email campaigns are not dead. You just need to make sure you're not spamming people. So ultimately, if you want to, if you have 2000 contacts or less, MailChimp is a very, very smart move to start with. You can always uh, bring your contacts over to another uh, tool later on, but if you want to just start with MailChimp, 
make sure and let people know that you're still around. You want to give them value. Hey, here's something that we recorded last week. Here's a link to it. I want to bless you guys with this or give you this extra little tip or tool. Uh, did you have any questions about, you know, our last session or anything like that from a mass uh, email standpoint? Any, anytime you're emailing more than four or five people at a time, you want to use MailChimp basically at the end of the day. Tim, can I break in a, sure. a great a great side benefit to a tool like MailChimp or some of these other tools, but MailChimp especially, is if you're new to marketing, which is what you know we're focusing on teaching people about marketing, right? Mm -hmm. um, it shows you and teaches you how to format an email or how to format a quick message or how to format a landing page, which so many people really don't have a clue on when they get started, right? So they have all those templates and everything and you just go replace the image and some group text and if you follow their template, you're tempted to put in six paragraphs, but their template has one paragraph and a click link, right? So it's like if you follow their process, when you graduate and move into your own um, platform, right? When you get big, so big that you have your own mail platform, you'll kind of, uh, kind of like train yourself on how to do it properly. They do have great, they do have great uh, kind of instinctive tools, kind of almost borderline. Um, it's more than templates. Like there's training and there's also, yeah, I love it. Good, good point. Great point, Kurt. Kurt. Anything else, Stacey? No, that's an amazing point to say that it, I, I know a lot of people that use MailChimp. Yeah, it's a sure. great, it's like the starting platform for email. Like this is where you want to start for sure. Um, it also integrates with some social media ads really well. And so if you're thinking about Facebook ads or Instagram ads or anything, you want to definitely give it a shot uh, to kind of integrate that together, okay? All right, I already mentioned Loom, so I won't go too much into this, but if you're gonna, yeah, if you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, if you're sending screenshots all over the place, like multiple screenshots for something, or you're trying to figure out like, how do I explain this without writing like a novel to, a, you know, a, a, one of your developers or a friend who's helping you with something or uh, someone like, uh, you know, Stacy's trying to help you set up Calendly or some, I, I don't know. You can just uh, record a video and say, hey, I'm having trouble at this one spot. It'll generate a link and you send it over. And then it's like you were talking to them for two or three minutes and there you go. Yeah, I love it. It makes it so much easier to follow. It's, there's also a little like extension in Chrome and some other, uh, so it's, it makes it really easy to work with. There's All a right. side benefit to the free version of Loom too. And that's, it limits you to five minutes. Yeah, which is a great, great tool. It keeps you from going too long winded. If you can't express something in five minutes, then you need to make a, an online course, right? Yeah, or, or set up a Zoom chat for 20 minutes or something. Like, just keep it. I love that, Kurt. Uh, man, you're like a brother from another mother. I love this. All right. Uh, IFTT is just straight fun. Like, this is like, if you want to use this for business and have some things trigger and automate, one app to another, think about it this way, anything that's on your phone that you wanna have communicate or trigger with each other, this is the tool you wanna to experiment with. You can kind of build your own, you can use some of the little triggers that other people have built. Ah, oh, gosh, I could give so many examples. Um, when I make a phone call, there's an automatic spreadsheet list that is created from my phone calls. I have phone calls that are recorded from the last probably three years or something like that. So I can go back and just think about, you know, date, time, you know, when, where, who, like I talked to on a spreadsheet. That's just one idea, but it integrates any app that we talked about today that's mobile-based can basically communicate because of IFTT T in one way, shape, or form. It means if then, then that. Wait, no, if this, then that. That's the correct way to say it. So that's what it stands for, but it's free and uh, gosh, you can have ringtones. You can have like all sorts of, I have a, I had an image come up on my phone. Uh, the NASA image of the day would come up on my phone every day and it would like change my background on my phone. Like there's just so a lot of it's fun, but a lot of it's business. Like you can do social media triggers. If you post here, it'll post over there. And it does it a little bit more natively. It's just very, very interesting the way it works. Um, Zapier, Zapier, Zapier. Hmm. Kurt, tell us about Zapier. 
Oh, you're muted, Karen. I was muted. <laughs> um, Zapier is just an amazing tool, man. It is. Um, so people use terms like API and it scares people when they hear things like from web talk. But if a web platform has an API, it has a magic key that allows it to connect to other platforms and other programs. And Zapier is one of those amazing tools that just glues those APIs together and allows things to integrate and work together without having to pay for crazy custom integration through a developer like me. Ah, there you go. So you're saving time, you're saving some money, you're making it, they're making it easy for thousands. I think it's more than 1500 apps now. I think it's more like 2,500 now, but there's so there's literally thousands of like programs that you're already using like Calendly and some of these other ones where you can trigger it into your CRM any anytime you're 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 entering data twice, you want to definitely think about Zapier first before you start entering data from your CRM and copying it over to here. Anytime you're copying, pasting, or entering data twice, think Zapier. And once you set up one session or one trigger on Zapier, which they call them Zaps, uh, once you set up one, you'll get hooked, and you'll be like, "Oh my gosh, this is going to save me." literally hundreds of hours if I do this right. All right, Thinkific is a fun way to get started on creating your own little courses and recording training videos and things like that, just a place to get started on that. Um, Kurt, have you experimented with Thinkific or some of these other type of platforms recently? It's been a, it's been a while since I've looked into it. No, I haven't used Thinkific. Uh, I'm an old Moodle guy from when I built learning management platforms for corporate folks, and now yeah. I'm, I'm into a WordPress environment. However, there are so many other like Udemy's and Kajabi's and all these other things where you can put this kind of content together, and uh, the, the options are endless. And and I think if you have, like I said earlier, if you have, if you have to express your training content in more than five minutes, you need to have an online course. There you go. So Thinkific is your kind of free starter. Uh, tool to do that and then there's other tools that cost a little bit but hey you got to start somewhere you got to practice this, i mean ultimately yeah these kind of tools are basically ways to get you get your engine moving right get the wheels greased and get going and, yeah, and if you're not going to do it now you're, you're going to look down down the road three years from now you're going to wish you had done it you know you gotta you gotta get prep the, the idea that you can do marketing or any kind of courses or anything like overnight and have like millions of people viewing it is ridiculous. I, I wish I could slap the marketing professionals um, that told you this can happen overnight and you're going to be like a rock star overnight and people are, everybody's going to know your name. It's, it's, it's about the years and years and years of hard work. And some of these tools can bring it down to months in some cases, but it's still thousands and thousands of hours that you're putting into this. So if you don't, if you're not interested in the long journey, then um, just, just don't, don't do it <laughs> at all. I mean, you get, you got to basically get started with some of these tools so that you can get good and then eventually get great at what you're doing. Uh, and you can, you can have team members manage this stuff. It's just, you just have to experiment with it for a few minutes and see if it's even worth your time. And in many cases it is. Answer the public is awesome in that you can basically search uh, keywords and it'll give you like a cluster of, of how people are searching for this online. Um, uh, it, and, it, and the way that it presents, you could almost charge another company for this. We don't, but um, you could if you wanted to because it's how it's presented and laid out. It's so well done um, that it just, it's visually, uh, uh, makes sense it uh, at least with the way my brain works like it's it gives you this visual experience of how people are searching for certain things online in real time like right now and so you're not getting old data it's it's co co collating aggregating data for you this is big data made simple basically is what this is all right crowdfire it helps you so post on social media platforms multiple social media platforms in a way that is easy. And it also co uh, collates uh, multiple um, articles, third-party articles that you can post. We recommend 
blasting your people with great third party content. It gives you credibility. If, as long as the, the, the image is good and the content is, is pretty clean and, and solid to the point, you can post a lot more third party content than you probably realize. I mean, if it's really good third party content, you can post as much as 80% of your posts can be third party content. You don't necessarily need to go that extreme, but if you don't have a lot of time to create your own content, start here. Like just get some, some good uh, pieces out there that reflect your brand and things you're interested in as a company or an organization. Um, yeah, it just makes it really easy to post to multiple platforms. Cloud Campaign is a paid version that has artificial intelligence built in. It'll, it'll learn what times are the best to post different um, content on social media platforms. It'll, it includes a lot more social media platforms than maybe some of the other tools like uh, Crowd, uh, Crowdfire is able to do all at one time. There's not as many limitations, uh, but there is a cost associated with it. So let us know and we'll We'll actually help you get this set up if you want to do it. Canva is a graphic design starter tool. It basically helps you create uh, good enough quality images. <laughs> Did I say that pretty good, ladies and gentlemen? All right, good enough quality images to be able to, to post on some of the, the main social media platforms. Um, you can also pay to get higher quality uh, images that, that might reflect you more effectively on website and other places like that, all right? So if it's a smaller image you're looking for or medium resolution kind of image you're looking for, Canva is a great free tool. It, but here's, here's the big benefit of Canva is it gives you like, like these customized sized images that you're using for different platforms like Facebook, um, LinkedIn, YouTube, like just different, different social media platforms it already has the templates built in. So if nothing else, it helps you at least get started on the sizing of your image. And then you can go and use other tools if you'd like to kind of um, build out higher resolution versions. You can upload your own images in here. Uh, and again, you can pay for the higher resolution even within Canva. It also integrates with some of the other uh, platforms that we mentioned earlier, like Cloud Campaign, okay? 10i is easy way to find large, higher resolution images of something that come, catches your eye online. Let's say you find there's some like small image that's inside of a, I don't know, on a website somewhere or uh, in a social media post somewhere and somebody posted it, but it, the quality, the, the resolution of that image isn't quite up to speed. It's not up to par. It's not even good. It's like low quality image, right? Well, you go and type it into 10i and it will search the internet, the interwebs, if you will, and find it for you. And then you can decide whether to buy it or grab it from a, another source. Uh, and ultimately there's so many of these images that are uh, slightly modified or changed or customized and you can just find a version of it that you like, okay? High resolution images. If you're looking for those, 10i is where to go. Um, also a little, uh, uh, um, there's a, there's a, there's another platform. It's called, uh, ups, upsplash, unsplash, unsplash, unsplash. Thank unsplash you. It's a great one. I use that all the time. It's, yeah, <clears throat> it gives you really crisp images. If you don't have the image already in your computer or you, you don't know what you're looking for, unsplash is actually a really good high quality place to find images just from the original artist and they post them in there and they're all ro royalty free. So Unsplash is a good safe place to put as like a header to your website or, you know, a main image uh, on a uh, just high quality images. Dropbox, good place to store your files uh, up to a certain amount for free. Uh, same with Google Drive, you can have up to a certain amount for free, but here, here's the thing. To have important documents just in your computer or one of your devices and hope that it, you're gonna keep that forever, it's just not the case. Every two or three years or, or less maybe, you're gonna be uh, dropping devices or changing devices and you don't wanna have to remember. Yeah, you don't wanna have all these, you don't wanna have just things on a, just a, uh, you wanna have it in the cloud. Uh, ultimately, 
if you if there's a trusted source that you can keep your files and you know they're gonna you know protect your files well dropbox and google drive are fine to start with and then if you want to pay for more space and then ultimately like kurt was just showing there you could maybe like once a year or once every six months you can back everything up on your own you know backup drive if you want but in the meantime ladies and gentlemen don't get too fancy with it just get your files in the cloud so that when you change computers or whatever, you're saving yourself hours and hours and hours of time trying to chase down those documents, those important files. All right, so what tools stood out most to you today? If you're watching the live stream or if you're um, watching the recording, we want you to take some action on this information. It might feel overwhelming, might seem overwhelming because there's a lot of tools. We get that, we totally understand it. We get all the feedback like, oh my gosh, there's so many tools. And yes, but it took us years and years to, to vet these tools down to the ones we actually use. We tried like 10 times as many tools as you see listed here, but we, we brought it down to the, the best, you know, a couple of dozen tools for you. So pick two that you want to experiment with. If we had more time, we, we, we can go into Calendly for just a second, Stacy, if you want, but if we, have more, if we have more time, we can go deeper into some of these tools, but your action assignment is to pick two, two tools, try it and screenshot it, or let us know which tools that you're using, put it in the Facebook group, the private group. Uh, and again, if you keep on this track, you're gonna end up earning a $1,500 reward, okay? The previous assignments were your four uh, micro assignments from the Blueprint, and then the LinkedIn strategy, sending out those 100 messages, okay? So we're trying to keep it you know, pretty simple. These micro assignments, these action assignments, they only take about five, 10 minutes if you're really on it, okay? It's not, it doesn't take that long to do it. Uh, the LinkedIn one might take 20 minutes, but, uh, but ultimately uh, it's definitely less than a half an hour of your time to uh, you know, dial in some of these action assignments and be able to improve your business, okay? We want, that's what we want. Next week is social media best practices. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to know more about some of the tools and tips and efficiency deals that we talk, uh, talked about today, please feel free to reach out to Corey. He's kind of our resident nerd automation guy behind the scenes trying to help us get going. We have other team members as well, uh, other power partners, you know, Kurt and others that can help with specific things. But, but uh, start with Corey. He'll point you in the right direction and we'll make sure you get any questions you have answered. Or if you want to look up Stacy Stockford on... LinkedIn or Facebook, then you can be able to reach out to her as well. Yeah, Glad sure. to be able to answer any questions and we'll point you to the right specialist uh, once you have any, uh, once we kind of clarify the questions you have, okay? So if you're listening to this recording or, or watching it live, we're glad to be able to, to partner with you on that, okay? All right, good. Now, Stacy, I wanted to share just real quickly we only have about a minute here but i wanted to share a couple of examples of calendly uh, a lot of people ask about calendly so we might as well just share it yes let's see, let's see if i can find it here hold on i'm gonna escape this give me one second i'm gonna share something yeah, Calendly, the setup of Calendly, I get, after we do this session, usually I get a lot of questions about the setup of Calendly. So we wanted to kind of give a quick little view about it. All right. So when you go into the back end of Calendly, okay, you're logging in. If you have the paid version, you can do multiple events. Okay. There's all these little boxes here. There are multiple events. Um, if you click on one of them, which you can have one for free you'll see that there's, there's different features on the back end of Calendly. We won't go into all these today, but just to get you started, I mean, um, the actual name of the event, just make it really simple. Hey, quick call with your personal marketing coach or to learn more about each other or something like that. And then there's a description section that just lets you know what the call is gonna be about. Uh, we recommend a 10 minute phone call. Uh, at, at the very, you know, at the very starting point. And if, if you want to view the page as it would be viewed from a prospect, as it loads here, um,
hold on one second. I want to make sure that I'm getting this loaded up properly. Let's go to uh, Stacy's for a second while the other one's loading. So Stacy, you have a 15 minute Zoom chat that you make available. And this is what the prospect or the client will look, look at when they're booking the appointment. You got your profile picture, little description, uh, little uh, title. It's gonna be a 15 minute um, Zoom chat. Uh, basically you're, you're letting people know that it's just enough time to swap stories, dig in a little deeper and learn about each other. Then you go and click on one of the dates. Then it brings up options. Brings up options of what's available. And like Kurt was saying, if it's a green dot, that means we're both available at that same time. That, that shows a lot of the different, you know, different, it matches up with my calendar, which is over here. And so I'm just doing this in real time um, to be able to show you how easy it is to book an appointment. So if I wanted to book an appointment at 12, I would confirm, put in my information and we're done. It's literally that uh, easy to, to kind of uh, set up. And it's easy to set up so that you um, know how many events you want in that day of that particular one. How many 15 minute calls do you want? Yep. How so many one hour little, calls? Do you get that's to set a little all two minute, uh, overview of Calendly really fast, just to let you know that it's, it's not intimidating. You have one event that you want to set up. It's usually a 10 minute call or a 15 minute zoom, something really short. You don't want to, you don't want to start probably with like a four four hour block or something. You, yeah. you want to you want to keep it pretty pretty simple just so you can connect with people. Okay. All right. Well, good, Stacy. We have a special guest with us today, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make um I want to make sure that uh, we have a chance to to connect with Adam and and maybe ask him some questions about his business and his story and his vision and some of the things that he's doing to be able to honor, honor our power partner relationship with, with him. And I'm actually going through some of his courses right now to be internationally certified as a, as a coach. And I just want, wanted to interview him today as our special guest. So thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Stacy. Really appreciate uh, your hard work and helping us walk through everything today. Awesome. 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 Have a great day. Adam, can you hear me, my friend? I'm excited. I can hear you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you got it. You got it. We love interviewing our power partners and those who are influencing our community and, uh, and the ability to be able to help each other and in our businesses has been just tremendous. So I, I appreciate your time today. Hey, first of all, people want to know who is Adam Fleming? Like, what's the story? Who are you? Where did you come from, man? Give us the background of of, of who are we talking to today? Well, yeah, okay. So um, I grew up on an organic strawberry farm before organic was a thing. Um, it was a, a very interesting, interesting place that I don't have time to go into, but I ate more, let's just say I ate more strawberries by the time I was 10 years old than most people eat in a lifetime. And uh, now I prefer blueberries. So I had, I had my fill of those. Um, so if you're a strawberry fan, I get it, but uh, you know it, there is too much of a good thing sometimes. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so um, I, I was I was interested in uh, helping people, even as a young person. Realized um, in, on my high school cross country team that I was good at encouraging the other guys, and we qualified for the state meet as a team, and you know, and they voted me most inspirational. Um, so I thought maybe I would be a, some kind of a pastor, some kind of a person working in the church world. And um, I went to a Bible school. And when I graduated, I sat down with my pastor and he said, what are you going to do next? And I said, well, so I guess I should go to seminary, right? <laughs> and he said, well, why would you do that? And I said, man, I don't know. <laughs> so that was, that was the end of that idea. And, um, you know, fast forward seven years or so. I'm talking to this guy at work and I said, Hey, I haven't had a mentor for a while. Would you mentor me? And he said, no, but I'll coach you. 
And I said, okay, man, whatever you call it, you know, I'm in my early thirties, I'm starting to have kids, I'm, you know, building a family and all that. And uh, as he started to coach me, I realized there's a methodology that kind of fits my encouraging, my mad encourager, like my hair is always standing up on end, you know, and I'm, I'm cheering people on, but there's a methodology to the madness. Um, If you get some really great training, you can learn how to channel that energy of wanting to encourage people into something that's really super effective and helps them make decisions, helps them move forward in their life and all that kind of thing. And so now, uh, long story short, it's been a 12 year career as a leadership coach. Uh, now what I do is I train people to do that same thing. So the thing that, that my first coach, and then they encouraged me to get training uh, in Virginia. And I went through this training. Now that's what I do as I train people, let's say it, real simply in soft skills, how to listen better, how to ask better questions and how to hold people accountable um, without beating them up. I like it. I like it. And I know I've experienced some of that as well. And it's benefited uh, not only my family, but our business tremendously. So really, really uh, excited to dig in a little bit more and, and share your genius with the world, man. This is super fun. Um, Thank you. What's the big vision, man? Like, like, are you, are you going to continue to train other coaches? Are you going to have other trainers that, I mean, what, what, what's the, what's the big vision here? 10 years from now, we're having this conversation. What, what does your organization look like? Yeah, 10 years from now, I may be focused entirely, you know, 80% of my day on writing fiction, because that's what I want to, another thing that I happen to love to do is just write novels. Mm -hmm. Um, But the big vision there, I mean, how how do I get my business to the place where I can do that, Mm -hmm. you know, four days a week or whatever, um, is to, yeah, we'd love to, in a year or two, be training as many as 100 people a year, um, and go up from there. Um, build up our trainer team so that we're actually, you know, the coaching world, if people are doing it really well, um, it can be, it can be a tough grind to get started in. And so we want to find people who have kind of gone through the grind enough to be at a place where they're, they're certified and they've got some experience under their belt and then train them also to be trainers in our program. And our, our focus is really on a couple of things that we bring that's unique to the world, um, it's the intercultural communication component that we w- that we specialize in, and then also just the fun of how we train with uh, fun games that um, makes it like, yeah, you're in an hour and a half class, but you, it's not a drag. Yeah. All right. And so there's an international uh, flavor to what you're doing, making sure that yeah. if you're coaching or, or or helping somebody in this way uh, from a different culture. That you're not going to be totally blindsided and, and totally out of your element. You have some context to remember. Oh, I remember Adam and the team where they were talking about this. And okay, so that's cool. You got a international flair going on to what you're doing and training specifically for that. Uh, right. So that, so that you have the skills needed to not only be a, a local coach, but more of a national or international uh, certified type of coach, right? Right, right. Absolutely. I mean, the local thing actually hasn't worked for me real well. And I'll be leaving my BNI after next week, because I just don't get that many referrals locally, with one exception, which is kind of funny, because it's intercultural, is somebody asked me if I could coach an Amish woodworking uh, business owner. So in terms of my local area right now, probably the only um, client I have within 60 miles is somebody from a different culture. Right. Yeah. And it's <laughs> ironic, isn't it? That yeah. They, yeah. So ultimately the world becomes your, your, your playground. If you can go international and, yeah. you, and you can get trained properly. Okay, cool. So what about your challenges on, uh, you know, your challenges at, as a business owner on a personal level, anything that you can share with us that maybe some of our audience might be able to say, Hey, you know, I can help with that. I like what you're doing, or I'd like to partner with you on that. Anything that's that's a challenge right now well i mean certainly um i'm connected with you guys partly because marketing is my biggest challenge Mm -hmm. um and it's like i've done some uh, like mailchimp type news i'm using mailer light now but i've done that newsletter thing um where i've been pretty consistent with writing one or two of those every month 
um, and keeping up with people probably for five or six years and, and growing that real slowly. Um, but you know, the consistency of social media posting and of making sure to capture people's email addresses and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's one of the biggest challenges because it's really, uh, as you were saying right at the end of the, the talk that like, if you're into this marketing and you think that your business is gonna make 10K next month from zero, it's not gonna happen. It's, it's very rare and you have to be in it for the long haul. So, you know, just doing the long haul marketing, doing the stuff that is um, consistent, you know, and, and having a consistent strategy that doesn't, you know, like somebody else comes along and they meet you and they got some great ideas and you go, oh, let's go that way. You know, like this morning I'm talking with a guy who has some kind of uh, AI thing that they put on your website and it tells Google AdWords what to do better. And, mm -hmm. you know, oh, that's a cool idea. But I mean, there's a million cool ideas and you just kind of kind of pick that strategy and, and yep. stick with stick with the strategy. I don't know if I'm really answering your question, but no, it's good for the audience to listen to kind of where you're at. And it is true. The, the, the road from zero to 10K a month is harder than the road from 10K to 100K a month. It, it just is. Yeah. And you might have some uh, other considerations as you're bringing team members on and things like that to reach that other milestone, which is essentially breaking the seven figure mark for the year. But, you know, that journey is very difficult in the beginning and it's, it's good to know that you're, you're breaking through some of those barriers and you're bringing on team members right now and, and you're training trainers and uh, you're, you're starting to hit your stride. And so that sounds like the challenge to me is just, just, just leveraging your time well so that you're not um, distracted by the shiny objects out there that may or may not generate revenue. Like we right. want to, we want to make sure and help, help this be sustainable for you. So we'll continue down that track. If there's anybody who's listening that wants to partner with Adam, um, he's a phenomenal coach. So there might be a, a, a way to help, help each other that way, but. Well, I'm one of the best. I mean, let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I will say that too. I've been, I've been in sessions before with different coaches and consultants and mentors and different types of people. And uh, when it comes to coaching, Adam not only has experience, but he's got the, the training and the, and the, uh, and the skill that, that underpins all that experience. So great, uh, great, great point. Hey, goals for the next year. Like, what do you, what do you want to see happen in the next year, man? Well, you know, in the next six months, we'd love to get 20 more people into our training program. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that, I mean, we're building the marketing engine, you know, that kind of will eventually run itself and all that kind of thing. But, you know, there's still, I think early in the process, still a lot of word of mouth that's required. So if somebody's hanging out a shingle as a coach and they haven't gotten any training for it, there's nothing illegal about that, but you may find that, and you may find that you can get some clients, but that doesn't necessarily mean you, you, you're going to have an effective uh, session. So anyway, that's kind of our short-term goal is to do that. And then to um, get uh, some of our programs need some additional certification. And we're sort of in beta mode on that already. So that's in process. And um, you know, I mean, you mentioned revenue. I, Timothy, I'm having my best month ever in 12 years of business this month. Um, and there's still 10 days left. So come on now. I mean, that's, that. that's pretty awesome. And I, I, I think I would, I would give some credit to you on that. Obviously some of that business was rolling in before I even met you and it was kind of in the process in the pipeline, but um, uh, you know, I can also credit you with just giving me more confidence that, Hey, that 10 K a month mark, is really right around the corner. You know, we might hit it this month. I'm not sure, um, but we got a chance for that. And that's pretty exciting because as you said, like if, if what you say is true and I have no reason to doubt you that it's easier to go from 10 to hundred than it is from zero to 10, then I'll be at hundred <laughs> next year. Come know, on now. Yeah, it's always month. nice when somebody's, you know, hit the grind, got a bunch of experience for, you know, a decade or more. Mm -hmm. And then they realize, wait a minute, what I need is marketing. Yeah. If I want to hit my goals. It right. isn't getting better at what I do. Right. It's getting better, better at letting people know what I do. Right. And so it's so or that exciting. I exist, that I, I exist. exist. <laughs> yeah. We've talked uh, about me being the best kept secret in Indiana. You know, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, not anymore. So you're the, no. the cat's out of the bag. Here we go. Let's, 
let's let more people and this is part of it just just sharing your story and being able to to yeah. kind of pull back the curtain a little bit let people know about your story you know what you're trying to accomplish and these group these group sessions that i've been a part of and been letting other people know about uh, can you explain just real quickly what those are uh, as we wrap up today just just kind of those training uh, sessions and packages and different uh, courses that you're you're able to put together for people yeah, so our training modules are pretty much a full-fledged, um, almost like taking a master's degree. They do take 80 hours to complete um, over the course of whatever it is, five months or so. So, you know, one of the questions that I would ask anybody thinking about doing that, and 80% of that or more is actual interaction with me. This is not like your uh, Thinkific, you know, watch a couple of videos on Thinkific type of deal at all. Um, it's much more intense and in depth. Um, think if it's great, you know, if you're doing stuff on there, that's totally cool. But that just to draw the distinction, um, am I answering your question? Yeah, we just wanted to learn more yeah. about this experience that people yeah, the ex have. Well, the experience, yeah, the experience is like really going in depth. You know, we use a process where my lecture portion is maybe 10, 15% of the hour. And then it's bam, we're going right into a demo. So you actually see it in action. Uh, uh, you're going into a, um, an exercise where you're practicing it with the group. And then you're going into a debrief session where this is where people learn the most. If you understand adult learning theory, people learn the most from unpacking the experience that they just had. So we end up with debriefs, um, it's, it's super interactive. And like I said, and then the fifth thing that I use is what, um, I have the five Ds, you know, demo, uh, describe demo, debrief and do. And then the fifth one is drama. So we're, we've been using just, just the other day, yesterday, I guess we were doing um, a bunch of drama games from the improv drama world. So if you've ever watched Whose Line Is It Anyway, or a show like that, and you've thought, man, that, that would be a fun way to learn, or that's terrifying. Either way, we'll make it, <laughs> even if you're terrified of it, we'll make it fun. So yeah, that's what we do in our training. It's a programs. safe environment to get certified internationally and make sure that you are uh, honing in your skills, sharpening yourself. If you're going to call your, you know, if you're going to call yourself a coach, you should probably have a coach. <laughs> number one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. You should probably get as deep as you can, as quickly as you can, so that you're guide, you know, you're kind of guiding people in a in a way that makes sense for 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 your specific skill set and the clients that you're working with. So Adam right. has a great way to bring coaching and defining that in a way that's very specific, so mm -hmm. that you're not wondering, is this mentoring? Is this consulting? Is this this? Is this advising? Like, no, this is coaching. Let's get really good at it. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. excited to be able to, to, to showcase a little bit of your, your offerings and your, your background and all that. So thank you, Adam, again, look up Adam Fleming, ladies and gentlemen, and ask him about these, uh, these courses, these, these certification programs that he has available for you. Um, look him up on LinkedIn. Uh, even if you're not necessarily interested in that yourself, maybe, you know, somebody who is, or if you want to help them with some of the, the pieces and the parts of his, his company. Uh, you might be able to uh, hop on as a team member at some point if you get to know him and if he likes you enough. So look up Adam Fleming, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, you might even notice some of his uh, uh, really great fiction writing that might be floating out there a little bit too as a little side note, but uh, super fun. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate you. Talk to you Thanks, soon. Thanks, Timothy. Take yep. care. Bye.